can get hot, huh? Yo. So when God brings you out of that place, all of a sudden things get hotter, it gets warmer. It feels like things are getting worse somehow. It feels like things are more hectic. It's more severe. You know, the saying that goes, you know, out of the frying pan and into the fire, which in our case, you know, is actually a good thing. But you might be sitting there and wondering, you know, what's what's going on? Why why is it so varami bana? Why is it so hectic? Why is it so yo yo? And uh, that's that's good news, actually. You know, we we stand with each other and we walk with each other and we really sympathize. And out of sincerity, you know, we talk and walk with one another because it is a process. But it's because we need to get clean. We need to get the ugliness, the dirt, the dross in the in the terms of silver side it needs to get out of you. So if you're in the fire, you know, I like to see it as you're in your 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 shaping season, in your shaping space, because now God has brought you out of that out of a place and out of that place that was holding you back. Now he's got into a place where he can work with you, where he can mold you, where he can shape you. And you know, to in order to do that, like silver and gold and platinum goes through a smelting process it needs to be burnt by fire hot warm fire it needs to reach a certain temperature so the gold can melt down and as it melts and you know as it's lying there burning and boiling all the ugly and dirt and dross and stuff come to the top and it gets scooped off by the craftsman you know so once that all is done and that process keeps going until all the all the dirt and the ugliness of it is out so the gold is pure then that craftsman can start doing something with it then he can make beautiful jewelry and whatever whatever it needs to be made with that gold or silver or whichever it's a process but fire burns hot my friend it burns hot it 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 hurts <laughs> <laughs> and and it can be you know but during that process we can rest easy with Matthew 11 verse 28 which wasn't originally part of my plan this morning but God brought it across my plate and it's actually so good because it tells us during that place Matthew 11 28 says come to me all who labor all all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He kind of speaks to himself where Jesus said, exchange the two. And it also speaks about giving stuff over to him, giving the stresses and the worries and the hurts and the things over to him so he can get working on it, especially in that shaping season, for his is light. Because the concerns are no longer really yours. Because you should know by then, or we should learn to know by now, that God has only the best in mind for us. You know, it actually says, um, James, <laughs> James 1 verse 2 and 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. You see this, count it as joy when you fall into trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The smelting process? Learn patience. Get the stuff out. Get the, let it become perfect, so you can lack nothing, so that stuff can get out. And Romans 5 says, and not only that, but we also glory in our tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. So it's that shaping process. That perseverance in, other, in a different translation talks about endurance, to get endurance as well. And we need endurance to keep running this race, you know, because in the end we get our reward for that. And we need to keep going through that. So bait fuss. Hold on when you're in that place of shaping. And, and yes, it hurts, and it has to hurt because God is re getting rid of the ugly stuff in your life that doesn't need to be there, that shouldn't be there. Stuff you've been clinging on to that sometimes we don't know how to let go of. Now, in certain times, I feel personally, I felt that God has ripped those things away because I've asked Him to, yet I can't let go. I haven't let go. 
Sometimes you let go and it's an easier process, it's a lighter process to get rid of. But because you are completely shaping how you live your life and what you do and what you do for the Lord and, the, and as you're moving out of the stuff of the world and into the stuff of God, it, it does hurt because somehow in our mind we still feel we're throwing away all this awesome stuff, which is not. There's so much greater stuff with God. And, and serving God is not a terrible thing. But we need to go through the cleansing process. It makes you a, a, a better person, a stronger person, a more equipped person to deal with all these things in much healthier, much better ways. So spiritually, physically and mentally you become cleaner, smoother, better, a well-oiled machine as it were. You know James 1 further in verse 12 to 14 it says, Blessed in the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. Remember this. This is important. Don't say you're tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. So your own physical desires, things that are not of God, you know, all the sinful things. And I know as I'm speaking, there's stuff that comes to your mind. That's not God that gives us stuff or draws you to it. That's your own free will. That's your own wants, your own needs, your own desires that's been instilled in you. And that is why it hurts to get rid of that stuff. Because you also, I found for me during that process, because I haven't found the stuff that means more to me yet. And now that I'm on the other side of a lot of that stuff, look, I still go through things as well. Um, Everything is a process and the time period of the processes are different. But as you go through that process, you learn the, the better, the best, the awesome, the great on the other side. And when that stuff does fall off, you know, I'm sitting in, in a lot of places and I'm sitting these days and I don't want to mention specific things, but I'm sitting there going, I don't even understand why that was ever a thing. I don't know why I was ever stuck doing this thing. It was... And then I feel stupid, to be honest, to go like, but, you know, that's just go how blinded and how closed your mind gets in that moment. But God comes and he transforms you. He renews your mind. He opens it up and you see. And it really is. It's so much more joyous for me on the other side, you know. So, yes, my friend, this strange, weird fellow over here, this guy, he's telling you to rejoice in your tribulations. Rejoice when you are tempted. Rejoice when you are facing challenging, chaotic, crazy situations. But put your yoke on Jesus. Take Jesus' yoke during the process because his burden is light. And let him deal with that stuff as he shapes you. You know, it's, it's like a, that, that one song that says, I'll praise you on the mountains. I'll praise you in the valley. You've got to praise God everywhere. And the Bible also teaches us to praise God everywhere, you know. And and then it also just comes back to remember that one verse that I like to bring up often as well in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. It says, rejoice always. Always rejoice. So my friend, I want to leave you today with stand strong. Exchange your heavy yoke for the light one that Jesus has for you. Keep going. Endure. And you will be rewarded by God beyond your expectations.